Hey everybody, Mike here. Just wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about some of the new things that came out with NSXT 3.1. This was actually a pretty big release from an NSX standpoint, so I'm really excited to go over some of the benefits, some of the things that have been introduced, some of the things that have been fixed. It's really good stuff, so let's get to it. So the first thing I wanna mention, and probably one of the most important, honestly, in this release, is Federation is now prod ready. It's now kind of got the green light for production use cases. And when I say Federation, let me be clear, I'm talking about having multiple physical locations and being able to span NSX across those locations, but have a common control plane across both and be able to have traffic failover between sites. I do wanna mention that NSX has done multi-site for a while. But Federation really kind of expands upon that and now makes it so you can have what's called a global manager. And this is basically a manager that manages all of the individual site NSX managers. So that said, NSX is now prod ready in 3.1. It's something you can get in and you can play with. There's a lot to the Federation topic, so definitely not something I'm going to dive into in this video, but definitely take a look at it. The next thing I want to talk about is there's been a bunch of enhancements to how NSX handles multicast routing. Now in the current iteration, specifically, I wanna be clear, when I say multicast, by the way, it's multicast routing. If you're running things like PIM sparse mode, which by the way is the only mode supported, or IGMP v2, et cetera, that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking just about multicast traffic passing throughout NSXT. You can absolutely do broadcast and multicast traffic in NSXT by default. This is if we're trying to route to external sources or vice versa. It does fully work in NSX and 3.1 from a multicast standpoint is a major release. So if you were lacking any of features from a multicast standpoint previously, definitely take a look at the release notes and see if those are now included in 3.1. The next thing I wanna talk about is V to T migrations. They have gotten a lot better. NSXT actually has a built-in migration tool called Migration Coordinator that's in the GUI itself. You can actually go to this and one of the cool things is this will actually migrate not only in place, but now as of 3.1, it can actually do lift and shift migration. So you could have your NSX V install over here, you can have your NSX T cluster over here, and you can actually lift and shift with this migration coordinator tool. Now that said, the scale has also been, been increased from a V to T standpoint. So now you can support up to 256 hosts for migration with the migration coordinator built into NSX T. Another thing that was introduced is now service insertion is now covered. So if you were doing some kind of service insertion or chaining in NSXV, that's now supported. Although I will say, I put the asterisk here, if you are doing that and you wanna migrate, you should definitely get with some sort of professional services, ideally VMware PSO, work with them on that because there's always gotchas and I don't know all of the gotchas, but it is a new feature to be able to support that service insertion scenario. So just make sure you're covered. One other thing I will mention is that if you are doing NSXV, OSPF is currently supported for NSXV, but not supported for NSXT. So that is one of the biggest barriers for people considering V to T. If that is the case, you can absolutely migrate, but you wouldn't be able to migrate your routing. You'd have to kind of set up your BGP routing in NSXT where you used to have OSPF in NSXV. Another exciting feature that's been brought to NSX now is intrusion prevention. Now, NSX has already had intrusion detection or IDS in the product since 3.0, but now you have IPS, so you can actually not only detect those layer seven attacks, but you can also now take active or take steps to prevent them automatically with IPS. If it does match those signatures, you can say, I wanna protect or prevent this attack instead of before just saying, I'm just gonna get an alert on it. I will say a couple of things to note here. One of the changes that's relatively big in my opinion in 3.1 is now that the IDS IPS licensing is enforced. So if you don't have the threat prevention license applied, then basically you won't be able to set up IDS or IPS. Now the good news is I will be doing some videos on this specifically to show you guys how it works. But if you're doing it at home, you're gonna be pretty much out of luck. Uh, maybe VMUG Advantage will have licenses for that. I'm not really sure, but just be aware of that. Also, if you're not familiar with the IPS functionality specifically in NSXT, it's actually based on the Suricata IPS engine, which is a pretty widely known IPS engine. So just keep that in mind, it's based on that and it'll actually download updates directly from VMware. So it does require internet connectivity, but there is also an offline option as well. So you can pull those updates uh, you know, manually and then push them over if you have air gap systems or something like that. One of the other things I'm super excited about is VRF Lite actually works in NSXT 3.1. In a previous version, I, yeah, there you go, 3.0.1, there was a bug and it was a really annoying bug, guys, I'm telling you, guys and gals, because 
I tried to set up VRF Flight in, actually I set it up in 3.0, it was fine. Went to 3.01 and it was broken completely. And the bug I got, it basically I couldn't enable BGP in the VRF instance. I will be doing a couple of videos very soon actually, uh, probably the next one or two videos after this. I'll be doing a couple of videos on VRF Lite, how to implement it, how it works from a design standpoint. I'll be going over all of that, but it does work in 3.1, so that's really exciting. The next thing I'm really excited about also is you can now do custom FQDN filtering. So previously, NSXT allowed you to filter on, I think it was like, a, I don't know how many URLs, like 60 or 100 URLs or something. It was all the common URLs. You'd see like Facebook, Google, YouTube, that sort of thing, but you couldn't do custom URLs. Well, now with 3.1, you can. So you could, for example, say, I want to block test.nerdytech.com, which by the way, I do not own that domain, but now I think I should probably go buy it. So you could filter that now. That's really cool. A lot of customers have been asking for that for a while. Another thing that's been introduced is a dark mode from a GUI standpoint. So you have still the old version of the GUI you can still look at, but you can now toggle on the dark mode as well, which I think is really cool. I've actually been using it quite a bit. I've never really been a fan of dark mode GUIs, but I started using it and it actually looks pretty good. And I've actually found it's a little easier on my eyes. I find less strain after hours of labbing, which is kind of weird, uh, but it definitely is worth a look. So take a look at it when you can. That said, there's a bunch of other stuff in 3.1 that you should definitely take a look at. This is only a very brief list. I'll drop a link to the release notes in the video description, so if you wanna go take a look at that. But either way, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. I will be doing, as I mentioned, some videos on some of these features that I addressed here, so keep an eye out for those as well. I am hoping to get on a more constant or more consistent release schedule. Right now, I've been kind of every other week or so. I'd like to get to every week, maybe even on like Mondays or something like that. So look for that to be a little more steady. And again, I, I think probably coming soon, probably the most soon from this video, I'll be doing some videos on VRF Lite, uh, IPS, and eventually Federation once I can build my lab up for it. So, so that said, take care everyone. See you next time.